In today's class, we're going to go through the scapula. Now, the scapula is also known as the shoulder blades, and it forms part of the shoulder joints. For healthy shoulders, the scapula does need to be able to move freely in all directions, and this will give you more efficiency and control with upper body movements that do involve engaging the shoulder blades. Many pressing and pulling exercises generally will ask for scapula control as well as strength. In today's class, we are going to work on improving that active range of motion for the scapula and also control and awareness as we go through the class. In today's class, what you will need is a stick and also two yoga blocks. Now, to begin with, we're going to start with cars in a quadruped position. So the movement will be starting with protraction, so I'm going to slide my shoulder blades forwards. Then from there I'll go into elevation, I'll slide the shoulder blades up towards my ears. And then retraction, pulling the shoulder blades back. And then depression, sliding them down. And then we're going to carve that into a smooth circular movement. So in quadruped. I want to make sure I have my shoulders above the hands and then hips above the knees. From here, I am taking a breath in, I'll pack that air down, build a little bit of tension, 30 to 40 percent, and then I'll begin. So I protract, pushing to, down towards the floor, spreading the shoulder blades apart, and then elevating, lifting the shoulder blades up towards my ears, and then retract. So I'm sinking down via putting the shoulder blades together as if I'm squeezing them together and then depressing the shoulder blades so sliding them into the back pockets and then returning to protraction. So pressing, spreading the shoulder blades apart, lifting shoulder blades up towards my ears, retracting, pulling the shoulder blades back to allow me to sink down towards the floor and then depressing. Now begin to carve that out into a smooth circular motion. Try to expand and hit every corners as you go through. As I'm working through this, I'm trying not to compensate from anywhere else. So I'm trying not to extend or flex through the spine. Try not to flex or extend through the neck. Elbows are kept locked out. And I'm making sure that everything comes just from the control of the shoulder blades. And now I want you to change that direction. Now as you're going through this, also tune in, assess, see how it feels. Are there any particular areas where you feel you might be moving a bit faster, struggling to, to control? Are there any areas where maybe it feels a bit more tense, tighter, more restrictive? Make note of all these little details. Maybe you have a little difficulty in certain areas of the movement without compensating from somewhere else. And finish there. Next, we're gonna go through a shoulder protraction and retraction pails and rails. Now, before I get into position, I'll explain to you the pails and rails for this exercise. So the pails will be shoulder retraction. So from here, I'm going to think, pull the shoulder blades back and squeeze them together as best as I can. Then the rails will be the opposite. So I'm going to push and think, spread the shoulder blades apart as well. So I'm trying to push away, but also spread my shoulder blades apart sideways. So you're going to need a sit now. For the setup, I will Bend my legs, bring the stick, place it over my feet like this. And then from here, I will have an option. So I can play with a few adjustments. I can just begin in this position to lean back, allowing my spine to flex, especially from the upper thoracic region, and then let the shoulder blades spread apart. Here, I can easily get into quite a good end range stretch for my shoulder blades. Alternatively, I can also play with walking the feet forwards a bit, and this will also bring me into a little bit more flexion and protraction for shoulder blades. I'm keeping a firm grip on the stick. 
So you can play with a couple of these variables, combine and see what you're looking for. Ideally is to get those shoulder blades to get into the end range of protraction, so spreading apart. You may feel a stretch around those shoulder blades between the shoulder blades as well. So in your position, we're just going to hold the passive stretch for a little bit. So I want to keep that slight tension. If I feel a stretch around the shoulder blades, I want to keep that slight stretch. Working on my diaphragmatic breathing, so I've slow breaths in, slower breaths out. I'm just trying to relax while I hold this passive stretch for about a minute, trying to calm the nervous system down, trying not to hold any tension, and just try to relax as best as I can into the stretch. Now, we'll begin the first round. So I'm taking a tight grip on the stick, I take a breath in and I pack that air down. Now I spread tension into my upper body, into my lower body, and now I begin my pales contraction of pulling the stick in towards me. My legs are there to block it. I build that from 20% to 40%. Nothing else is changing with the body setup. I'm not extending or flexing through the spine. I build it up to 60. I match the rest of my body tension with that 60. Now I build it up to 80. And now I take it to my best effort and I'm gonna hold that for 15 more seconds. Doing my best to keep that tension, doing my best not to extend through the spine. And then when I say, I'm going to go into my rails contraction. So in three, two, one rails contraction, you're trying to spread the shoulder blades apart, protract some more, get the stick to leave the feet as best as you can for another 15 seconds. And when I say we're going to relax that effort, keep hold of the stick, and then try to sink further into the passive stretch. So relax the contraction. Now I can choose to walk my feet out a little bit. I could even choose to lean back a little bit and let the thoracic spine flex, allow the shoulder blades to protract a bit more. What I want is that we're near our end range again. So from here I return back to my diaphragmatic breathing. Slow breaths in, slow breaths out. I'm using the breath just to allow me to calm the nervous system down a little bit, recover a little bit for my second round. All right, round two. Breath in again, spread tension into the upper body, into a lower body, tight grip on the stick, pales contraction, 20%. 40. Think about contracting what you feel is being stretched. 80. And best effort. Keeping that same effort, keeping tension throughout the rest of the body. Fighting to pull those shoulder blades together. 10 more seconds. Three, two, one rails contraction, so trying to spread the shoulder blades apart further, trying to get the stick to leave my feet. And I'm giving it my best for this part. Stay with me. 10 more seconds, then you'll relax the contraction and move deeper into the passive stretch once more. So in five, four, three, two, one. I relax the contraction and then I can walk my feet out a little bit more again. And then I found myself in my passive stretch again. Return back to the diaphragmatic breathing. A couple of deep breath cycles in and out. slowly coming out of the stretch.
next exercise is going to help reinforce what we just trained. So it's going to be a lift off for shoulder protraction. Now, how I'm going to do the exercise, I can either be in my kneeling position or work from my tall kneeling position. I bring the stick out in front with an overhand grip, roughly shoulder width apart. From here, with the shoulder blades somewhat neutral, I'm then going to protract to my end and fight for more and hold for five seconds and then reset. Protract, spreading the shoulder blades as part as best as I can, pushing forwards with a stick, hold for five and then reset. We're going to do two sets of five second holds for each rep, five reps per set. Stick is out in front, I squeeze, breath in, spread tension throughout the rest of the body so our arms are tight, chest and back is tight, lower body is tight and I begin. I protract, spreading the shoulder blades apart, pushing the stick forwards as best as I can. When I get to my end, I fight for more and reset. Rep number two, lift off. Five, four, three, two, two, reset. Lift off. Five, four, three, two, three, reset. Lift off. Five, four, three, two, four, reset. And last rep. Lift off. Five, four, three, two, five. Take a little break. Now what we're training here is very similar to the end position of a push-up. So when you're pushing from the floor and you get into that push-up position, you are wanting to spread those shoulder blades apart into protraction in that end range before you're then going into your next rep. So here I want you to just tune in, see how that feels. Do you feel you have better control? Do you feel you get better movement out of protracting the shoulder blades after we've just done a couple of sets of these exercises. Right, going into the second set now. Stick out in front, breath in, tension throughout the rest of the body, and lift off. Five, four, three, two, one, reset. Lift off, five, four, three, two, one, reset. Lift off, five, four, three, two, three, reset. Lift off, five, four, three, two, four, reset. Lift off, five, four, three, two, five, reset, and rest. Okay. We are going to move on now, and you're going to need your two yoga blocks. We're going to train scapular retraction near its end range. So imagine the bottom now of a push-up position. Scapular retraction will be to pull the elbows back and away, okay? How this is going to work is I'm going to be on my front, and I want to test first how my scapular retraction is. So from here, I attempt to lift my hands off the floor. And if I feel I can lift them off the floor quite comfortably, then what I can do is get my yoga blocks and set them up in this position. So then I'm closer to my end range where if I try to lift the hands off the blocks, I feel that I can't. So from here is where you're going to be working with the exercise. It's going to be a pails and rails contraction for our first steps. So pails will be to push down into the ground or into the blocks. But I want there to be an emphasis of pushing with scapular protraction. So when you're in this position and you're pushing, stink, slide the shoulder blades apart to make that emphasis, to make that happen. So I'll be here. I'm on my front. As I push down, I'm pushing with an emphasis to slide the shoulder blades apart, just like I did in the last exercise, to drive through with shoulder protraction. Then it will be the opposite. I'll try to lift the hands off the block. Imagine there's a scale underneath your hand and you want it to reach zero. 
and you're squeezing the shoulder blades together as best as you can for the rails contraction. So setting yourself up, assess whether you do need to place a few blocks underneath the hands. I think I focus on keeping my elbows in. From here, breath in, build tension into the upper body, into the lower body, and with 20% effort, begin pales contraction. So I'm pushing down into the blocks without actually pressing off the floor, trying to spread the shoulder blades apart through protraction. And now I build that effort up. So I go from 20 to 40. Now I go from 40 to 60. I ramp up to 80. And now my best effort. I'm going to hold that effort for another 20 seconds. Try to keep that tension throughout with the emphasis on pushing and protraction through the shoulder blades. Five more seconds. Three, two, one. Now rails contraction. So imagine a scale underneath your hands. You want that scale to read zero. I'm pulling the elbows up towards the ceiling, squeezing the shoulder blades together as best as I can. Fight it. Ten more seconds. Five. Four, three, two, one, and slowly relax. Now, we're going to do a second set. Either you can do a second set in exactly the same position. You may feel that you get a little bit more range and you get a little bit more of a lift off when you go into your rails contraction. So now you can also choose to adjust the height of the block slightly. So for my second set, I'll go a little higher with the blocks. Okay, another note is that this will bring the shoulders a little bit more into shoulder extension. So you might also feel a slight stretch on the front of the shoulder, maybe even the pec region as you do this exercise. Right, second round. Breath in. Build some tension through the upper body. Spread that tension into the lower body. Now, pales contraction. So driving down, and push the shoulder blades apart. Take it from 20 to 40. Now, 60. 80. And now I want you to give it your best effort. And keep that same effort held for another 20 seconds. Nothing else changes in my body setup. I'm making sure I keep tension through my lower body, throughout the whole upper body. Five, four, three, two, one. Rails contraction. So pulling the short blades back as best as I can, squeezing in the middle of the shoulder blades as best as I can, trying not to lift the chest up, but then through the spine. Another 10 more seconds. Keep that tension for five, four, three, two, one. And slowly relax. <coughs> Now for the next exercise, we're going to do lift-offs. I want the lift-off to be a combination of retraction, so pulling the shoulder blades back, but also now depression. So as you pull them back, you're going to try to slide them down simultaneously. I want us to be slightly more within our active range of motion. So if I finish my last set here, I'm going to either flow the blocks down a little bit more, or I could even remove them completely and do this exercise from the floor. I could choose to do it with the palms on the floor or even fists. What we're going to do is two sets, five second holds, 
for each rep, five reps per set. So lying on it, huh? As a reminder before we start, so it's a lift off, putting the elbows up via shoulder retraction and depression. So sliding the shoulder blades down into the back pockets, hold for five seconds, and then our reset. So choosing a strategy that allows you to build tension as well. Breath in, spread tension into the upper body, into the lower body and lift up. So shoulder retraction and depression. Hold in for five seconds. Three, two, one, reset. Lift off. Five, four, three, two, two, reset. Lift off. Five, four, three, two, three, reset. Lift off. Five, four, three, two, four. Reset. Final rep. Lift off. Five, four, three, two, five. And take a little rest. <coughs> so this movement is very similar to how you would be in the bottom position of your push-up with the shoulder blades retracted. Um, but what I like about combining retraction and now depression is this is also an important movement pattern for say pull-up based movements where you want to retract the shoulder blades but also depress before you pull into that top position of a pull-up. So here is building more awareness and control just by now isolating that movement of how we use a shoulder blades to initiate that pulling based movement. Right, second step. Set myself up again. Breath in, tension through the rest of the body, and lift up. So retract and depress. Putting the shoulder blades, squeezing them together, sliding them down as best as I can. Three, two, one, reset. Lift off, five, four, three, two, two, reset. Lift off, five, four, three, two, three, reset. Lift off, five, four, three, two, four, reset. Last rep, lift off, five, four, three, two, five, and reset. <clears throat> right, now we're going to close the class with just a weak test on scapular calves. So we'll return back to the quadruped position. Now if you found in the warm-up that it was a bit uncomfortable on your wrists or you found you were bending through the elbows quite a bit, then you can try with the yoga blocks with your hands over the blocks like this. It's a bit more friendlier for the wrist than the elbows. You could also use dumbbells and holding them in a neutral position or you could also do this exercise just on your fists and see if that makes it slightly easier for you to kind of control your scapula movement. So we're just going to use this now. A few reps in each direction. Check in and see how it feels. So breath in, have a little bit of tension, and then I begin. So I protract, pushing down into the floor, spreading the shoulder blades apart. Then I elevate, slide the shoulder blades up towards my ears, and then I retract. Pull the shoulder blades back and together, and then depress, sliding them down. And now I carve that out into a smooth circular motion. How does it feel? Does it feel smoother, looser? Do you notice if there is less tension to what there may have been before? As you're going through the movement, do you notice whether it's easier to control all aspects of the movement? Were there any parts which you might have been struggling earlier that you're not now? 
How does that range of motion feel? Meanwhile, continue to try to carve out the biggest circle possible on each rep. Moving slower and controlled, think one mile per hour. Now changing direction. Still focusing on getting that movement, just coming via shoulder blades rotation. So I'm coming out a smooth circle, trying to hit every corner of that circle. Again, now that we've changed direction, how does it feel? Do you feel you have more control? Do you have less control? Does it feel smoother? Does it feel less restrictive? 